During the Clone Wars, the best Separatist pilot to ever grace the galaxy, Toph and Vayne, came head to head with the best star pilot to ever live, Anakin Skywalker, after Vayne believed that Anakin had killed his father in a horrific war crime. This brewed an intense rivalry between the two, with Toph and Vayne vowing to do anything in his power to slaughter Anakin for his actions and to bring the Republic to its knees. So if you haven't seen part 1 or part 2 of this comic, make sure you check them out in the pinned comment as this story won't make much sense if you haven't seen them. To begin the story, Anakin begins a mission briefing with his clone troopers and informs them that their target today will be a hidden enemy base inside of the Veil vale Nebula. Anakin suspects that the recent Valahari attacks on the Republic blockades have been originating from there. Unfortunately however, interference from the Nebula is preventing Anakin from obtaining the exact coordinates of his arch enemy, Toph and Vayne. But of course, Anakin had a homing device planted on Vayne's ship in the last issue, so they have a rough idea of his location. Anakin then informs his men that he will lead Gold Squadron into battle first, engaging their fighters and to draw them away from the enemy base. He also warns his clones that these are not droid ships with pre-programmed tactics. This is the infamous Raider Squadron and is made up of the absolute best pilots in the galaxy, flying highly modified starfighters. Because of this, Anakin has called up two of the other best pilots in the Jedi Order, Plo Koon and Sacy Tin, to back him up and take on Toph and Vayne's men. As Sacy Tin hears this, he is slightly concerned, asking Skywalker if he has considered that this could be a trap. And hilariously, Master Plo says, I believe the idea of a trap would only encourage him, Master Tin, leading Ahsoka to smile because she knows that it is absolutely true. Following this, Obi-Wan moves in to take over the briefing, informing the seated clone troopers that once the enemy fighters are occupied, Obi-Wan will move the cruisers in to surround the enemy, hoping to force their surrender. One of the clone troopers then speaks up, much to the shock of his brothers, saying, General, why not just send in the bombers? Obi-Wan then sternly replies to his trooper, telling him, besides military personnel, the base likely houses civilians. Obviously, if the Republic bombed these civilians, it would be yet another war crime, violating the Yavin Code and the Galactic Accords. Following this, Obi-Wan orders the clone pilots to their ships before one of the members of the Gold Squadron walks up and salutes Anakin, pledging to follow him anywhere. You've gotta to love to see this loyalty from the clone troopers. Hilariously, Obi-Wan asks Anakin, does that pilot know you just crashed again? But Anakin brushes his master's comment off, jabbing back at Obi-Wan by saying, if you don't crash once in a while, you're probably not in the fight. Obi-Wan is slightly angered by this, but Ahsoka quickly pulls them out of the conversation, telling Anakin that his new fighter has arrived. Ahsoka then tells Anakin and Obi-Wan that this is the fastest ship ever produced by Kuat Systems, and R2 begins to give it an awesome yellow paint job. Following this, Ahsoka is genuinely worried about her master because she knows just how dangerous Toph and Vayne is, wishing that she was out there to cover Anakin's back. Anakin then holds Ahsoka's chin up and tells her, I'll be fine, reassuring his Padawan that he will return to continue her training no matter what. Following this, something very unfortunate happens. Toph and Vayne's droid discovers that his ship has Anakin's homing device attached to it, but Toph and Vayne is so confident in his abilities that he decides to leave it on his red painted starfighter because he wants to face Skywalker alone. As this is happening, Toffin's protocol droid informs him that he has a transmission from his homeworld of Valahari, marked urgent. It is from his mother. As Toffin answers the holo transmission, his mother realizes that she has made a terrible mistake by agreeing to marry Count Dooku, and has now seen proof that Dooku's agent, Ventress, was the one behind the death of her husband, and not Anakin like she originally thought. Toffin Vane refuses to admit it, but he knows the truth. He knows that his father figure and his leader has betrayed him in the most horrendous way, but at this point he is so lost that he just doesn't care. He uses this anger to fuel his fight against the Republic and to crush anyone who fights for them. His mother then pleads with him, begging for her only son to return home before he is badly hurt or killed. A fury then rushes over Toffin as he coldly tells his mother that he will not be returning home and that she should be proud that he is going to eliminate the corrupt Republic. Toffin then hangs up the holo transmission with a burning passion to destroy the Republic seeping through his voice, promising that he will return to his mother and wife after this one final battle. Toffin's mother then falls to her knees in pain, telling her son that she loves him, hoping that she will get the chance to look into his eyes one more time. Following this, tears roll from Toffin's eyes as he looks out into the void of space where a pack of Nibre whales is roaming and is very soon informed that the Republic forces have entered the nebula. 
As this happens, Anakin calls for his gold squadron to form on him and calls Master Plo and Stacey Tin into action, ready to strike. Obi-Wan calls for Anakin to take it easy, but before he can even get the Separatist base into visual range, his men are ambushed horribly. Toph and Vayne, of course, doesn't recognize the lead fighter at first because it's a brand new modified ship, but he does soon realize that Skywalker has found himself a new ship. He then orders his men to deal with the other Republic fighters as he wants to take Skywalker alone. As this happens, Masters Plo and Tin are in critical danger under heavy fire from Toph and Vayne's men, but Obi-Wan soon brings the cruisers into range, ready to force the Separatists into a surrender. Unfortunately, out of nowhere, Toph and Vayne calls in completely unexpected reinforcements. He calls the Nibres in with a low frequency signal, leading them to disastrously ram into the Republic cruisers before they take a massive bite out of one of them. Obi-Wan and Yalaran quickly realize what is happening and know that they must turn off the low frequency signal or they are all going to be eaten by the Nibre. This causes Ahsoka to leap into action, calling on her Shadow Squadron to back her up as she races out into space, ready to destroy the signal. She also orders Clone Trooper Striker to get into the gunner's seat, ready to back her up. Meanwhile, the two best star pilots in the entire galaxy are locked in a dance of death. They roll, weave and swerve through the Nibre, pushing their fighters to the absolute limits of their construction. Each one manages to get small jabs in, but they are all soon foiled by the other's incredible skill. Toffin then attempts to get behind Anakin's fighter, which of course gives him a major advantage, before badly damaging Anakin's heat exchanger. As Anakin continues the battle, locked in an intense dogfight with Toffin Vane, he realizes something shocking. He finally understands that the Force is strong in Toffin Vane. Back at the Republic fleet, many clone troopers are tragically killed by the Nibre, and Obi-Wan's cruiser is at its absolute limit. Ahsoka and her Shadow Squadron bombers, however, are on the move, ready to eliminate the signal and hopefully save the fleet. Following this, Ahsoka tells Stryker to get his trigger finger ready, and he is very happy to be taking the shot, telling Ahsoka that he will be ready as soon as he can see the target. After this, Obi-Wan tells Ahsoka that he has carefully followed the Yavin Convention, which is one of the documents that outlines war crimes and the rules of war, and has given the civilians on board Harko Station enough time to evacuate, meaning that Ahsoka can bomb the entire place to pieces without committing a war crime. After hearing those words, Ahsoka then pulls off the unthinkable, blowing the entire station to pieces, killing everyone on board, and saving the Republic fleet. Yalaran is incredibly impressed and even proud of Ahsoka and her Shadow Squadron for saving so many Republic lives. As this is happening, Anakin and Toph and Vayne continue the most intense fight in galactic history, again dodging, ducking and weaving through each other's immense attacks. Anakin demands that Toph and give up now that Harko Station is destroyed, but he refuses, willing to die for the Separatist cause. Following this, Anakin is horrified to see that Toph and Vayne's engines are completely overloading, burning the young Separatist prodigy to a crisp inside of his cockpit. Toffin's blood-red starfighter eventually crash lands with a horrific clank in the landing bay of Anakin's Republic cruiser, before Anakin rushes over to his rival and pulls his horribly charred body out of the wreckage. Anakin holds his arch enemy in his arms for the final moments of his life, and in Toffin's final breath, he begs Anakin to bring justice for his father. Tragically, Toffin then succumbs to his burns and dies a very heroic death. And the awesome thing is that Anakin does actually fulfill his promise to Toffin by killing Count Dooku in Revenge of the Sith, avenging his biggest rival. Back on Valahari, Dooku tries to comfort his soon-to-be wife, but tears roll down her face and she tells Dooku that she will never marry him after what he has done. He has not only killed her husband, but now gotten her only son killed. Surprisingly, this genuinely hurts Count Dooku. He genuinely felt an attachment to Lady Vayne, but unfortunately used horrendous methods to get to her. Following this, Anakin and Obi-Wan return to Valahari to pay their respects to Toph and Vayne, respecting how he valiantly fought for his people. Anakin even adds that he was one of the bravest and most honorable men that he had ever met. Toph and Vayne was the only Separatist pilot that the Republic ever respected. And to end the story, Dooku returns to the Lemurge Power Building in the Coruscant Works District, where his master Darth Sidious applauds him for eliminating the threat of the royal families. Finally, Sidious names him the hero of the Confederacy, rather than the man who really deserved it, Toph and Vayne. Dooku will live the rest of his life in pain that he could not remain with Lady Vayne. And that is the end of the series. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed this three-part series. If you want to see more, just let me know down below. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.